Hello, my name is Scott Summers. I'm General Counsel with the Nebraska Department of Education. Uh, here today to go over with you a presentation that's titled Privacy of Information in School Threat Assessment. Uh, actually what we're going to go over is represented in, on the first full page after the title called Content of this Webinar. We're going to be talking about uh, a scope of a problem that primarily deals with the reluctance of educators and others to disclose personally identifiable information in student records in health and safety emergencies or other threat type situations. We're going to be dealing with the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, commonly known as FERPA. We'll be talking a little bit about its definitions, the elements of education records that, it, that are subject to FERPA. We're going to talk about exceptions and what is not subject to FERPA. Almost any privacy uh, type law or regulation has many exceptions, as does FERPA, some of which in particular, the health and safety exception, are particularly relevant to things dealing with school safety. Uh, finally, we're going to talk a little bit about HIPAA, uh, which uh, actually has some interplay with FERPA in health and safety emergencies, but as we'll see, uh, is generally not an issue. The idea uh, of when it's appropriate to disclose information about the behavior of a student that an educator or other uh, person in a school setting might deem concerning uh, begins with a look back at some of the things, unfortunate events, that this country's experienced uh, over the last couple of decades. Uh, we've just got three of maybe some of the more prominent ones uh, noted on this outline. Um, Virginia Tech, Arapahoe High School, and of course the Columbine shooting in Colorado. To give you some background of uh, the interplay of records released concerning information of students to this kind of thing, I'd like to read uh, a paragraph which is actually from a uh, 2018 opinion of the Colorado State Attorney General that outlined some findings that were commissioned after some of these uh, school shooting tragedies. In 2007, the governor of Virginia commissioned a panel of experts to study a mass shooting at Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University, Virginia Tech, in which 32 students lost their lives. The report of the Virginia Tech Review Panel was presented to Timothy Kane, governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, entitled Mass Shootings at Virginia Tech, April 6, 2017. While the study identified many factors as potentially contributing to the tragedy, confusion about FERPA was among them. The study highlighted, quote, wide, widespread confusion about what federal privacy laws allow, close quote, including a failure to realize that, quote, federal laws and their state counterparts afford ample leeway to share information in potentially dangerous situations, close quote. The report observed that, in the case of Virginia Tech, this confusion hampered effective information sharing, limited opportunities to identify the gunman as a safety risk before he committed his acts of violence. In 2016, a report analyzing the circumstances leading to a shooting at Arapahoe High School in Centennial, Colorado, likewise cited misunderstandings about FERPA. For example, school staff believed that under FERPA, quote, they would be more liable if they shared information about the gunman's concerning behaviors than if they had not, close quote. These mistaken assumptions included the belief that staff could not share information with others within the school itself. Staff believed that, quote, they could not discuss a student's concerning behaviors with other teachers or staff prior to the shooting because FERPA guidelines prohibited it, close quote. talk a little bit about FERPA and to whom it applies and maybe we can begin to dispel some of the misconceptions of uh, educators and other school staff in these settings that I just read from concerning these reports. The Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, FERPA, is, is a federal law. The actual uh, meat of uh, the specifics are more contained in the federal regulations in Title 34 of the Code of Federal, 
federal regulations, excuse me. To whom does it apply? Well, it applies to all educational agencies and institutions that receive funds from the U.S. Department of Education. But I want to emphasize that that means directly or indirectly. In other words, if you work in a school district in the state of Nebraska, uh, your district employer is almost certainly subject to FERPA, even if it gets nothing directly from the U.S. Department of Education, even if it simply were to get funds that flow through the State Department of Education to the district. It is uh, very much the case that all school districts in the state of Nebraska are subject to FERPA. Some private schools can be uh, ESUs, educational service units may be by virtue of to whom FER to what FERPA applies as well. Um, what is FERPA by definition? It is a, it's a federal law that protects the privacy of student education rec records and that prohibits unauthorized disclosure by personally of personally identifiable information, often referred to as PII, without the written consent of the parent or guardian or other responsible adult. As I mentioned before, however, all privacy laws have several exceptions that can apply. What are education records? The laws and regulations provide that there are records, files, documents, and other materials which, one, contain information directly related to a student, and two, are maintained by an educational agency or institution, such as a school district or individual school attendance center. The hammer, so to speak, for FERPA violation is that the United States Department of Education could withhold funding, federal funding, from an offending inst educational institution, such as a school district, However, in the 40 plus years of the history of the FERPA law and regulations, that has never happened that we know of. There are elements of an education record that one would go through, so to speak, to check the boxes to see if we're dealing with an education record. Uh, the slide that you may see on your uh, screen shows the elements of an education record also is contained or flushed out in the United States Supreme Court several years ago of Gonzaga uh, University versus Doe. It has to be maintained by a school. Uh, when a FERPA was originally written, which is 1974, uh, we were dealing with hard copies and file cabinets. Uh, but it does uh, obviously apply, although it sometimes struggles to apply, to things kept in secured data sets in electronic format. It simply is not a matter of the medium or material, it's that it is recorded and that it is part of the record of an educational agency or institution on an individual student. Um, it has to be that the records come from a person acting for the school, whether that's a school employee official or other such person. Uh, that is one of the elements is that they're maintained by the school or for the school by an authorized person. And also, uh, it needs to be the case that a separate record of access for each pupil uh, to be kept with education records. In other words, whenever they're accessed by third parties, it's supposed to be recorded in the records. The records are supposed to be only available to parents, school officials, and assistants who are custodians of the records and officials that have a legitimate educational interest. So let's talk about some things that might not be education records which could come into play in the situations involving school safety and uh, safety emergencies. A piece of artwork not kept by a school, for example, that the student takes home is not itself an education record unless somehow the school has kept a copy of it or the original in an education record maintained in the school. An individual paper a student might write that might be graded but not kept itself is it by the school or maintained by the school is not an education record under FERPA. The Supreme Court has also held that student graded answers with students verbally responding to the teacher on the number of correct answers such as when students trade papers and then verbally uh, state in class that the paper of the student they're holding got 10 right, got 11 right, and so on, the Supreme Court said that does not violate FERPA as the disclosure of an education record because the students aren't acting as uh, custodians of the record for the school and the grades have not been re yet been recorded. I have some personal uh, questions and misgivings about that decision, but that was a U.S. Supreme Court decision of uh, probably going on two decades ago. Miscellaneous emails 
that might be uh, exchanged between school employees and, employees and officials about a student but that are not kept or maintained in any kind of official student record or file are normally not education records under FERPA. Records on school staff, even if they might include, say, a grade transcript from the st staff person's college education, are not an education record subject to FERPA. Even if it is uh, some kind of record, again, there are other types of records not subject to FERPA that are very critical for understanding how one should and maybe should not respond in education safety emergencies. A1, personal observations. That is not a record. A teacher or administrator disclosing to a third party that they observed a student acting agitated and had an, that the student had an overcoat on, that observation is not an education record subject to FERPA. We need not be concerned about disclosing it without parental, written consent, etc. Two, social media. In this day and age, many students are out making statements, posting things on social media, on the internet, various other sites. Uh, these are not normally maintained by a school or authored by someone acting for the school, so those are not education records subject to FERPA. A school could share a, tw a tweet received by one student from another if that is relevant to the situation that might involve a school safety matter. Three, directory information. Under FERPA, person identifiable information includes the student's name, includes the student's date of birth, and all these normal uh, types of information about a student. However, under FERPA, as many educators know, a school district or an educational institution can designate certain types of information as directory information that takes it out of the personally identifiable information category and places it in a category that does not require parental consent for a school to disclose. These are normally the same demographic kinds of things I mentioned such as student name, uh, grade, year in school, this kind of thing. Um, However, there's no such thing as directory information that is simply directory by its nature. A school district has to designate what in writing to the parents and guardians and custodians in its school handbook or otherwise what it considers directory information and allow the students, parents, guardians, etc. to by writing opt out and say I don't want my child's name to be directory information. But directory information if it hasn't been opted out of, can be disclosed. Therefore, it would not be a violation of FERPA to simply reveal that Tom Smith is an 11th grader in our school, etc. Law enforcement records. This piece applies to records or, that are made or maintained by any component of an educational agency or institution, think district in our case, that the district designates to enforce law or refer matters to authorities of law enforcement when the records concern law enforcement. Those are not FERPA covered records. One example might be a security video if it's maintained by a law designated law enforcement entity. Um, if it's maintained by a school outside of the designated law enforcement unit, that exception does not apply. It also does not apply if the law enforcement unit maintains and creates it, but the record is not for purposes of law enforcement, such as only for student disciplinary action for violation of the student disciplinary code of conduct that is not a crime. Uh, there have been writings within our state that talk about how this uh, law enforcement exception is really seldom applicable, seldom used, because a uh, few districts in writing designate a law enforcement unit. Uh, that is likely the case and it is likely probably changing as a law was passed in the 2019 legislative session that provided for this department, the Department of Education, to issue uh, model agreements between law enforcement agencies and school districts for school safety purposes. So I, we believe it to be the case that we'll be seeing more and more uh, applicability of the law enforcement exception as time goes on. Exceptions to the general consent rule, the personally identifiable information in student records can only be released with the consent of the parent or guardian. 
Uh, records can be released to and exchanged among school officials. These are persons and individuals from inside or outside the school um, and could also include things like law enforcement and threat assessment teams. Those can be school officials. It's a question of fact and has the school uh, authorized these people to perform school functions. These people have to have legitimate educational interests in the records to be released to them that are, do not have the parental consent. And their access to the information by under FERPA is limited to only that information which they have legitimate educational interest. They do not need to ask for consent to access the information when all those elements apply. This can include that things like school attorneys, school counselors, even outside third-party security staff under contract with the district, teachers aides and clerical staff, but annual notification to parents and guardians under FERPA requires that the school district describe the types of persons with legitimate educational interests that may have access to personally identifiable student records under this exception of FERPA. And so it is usually in the best interest of school districts to describe broad categories of people in that regard in its annual written notice. Also, schools can provide student files and records uh, to any other school to which a student will be attending, including the disciplinary records. Under Nebraska law, it requires the schools shall provide those records upon the transfer of a student, but this is a direct school to school transfer. The emphasis for school safety purposes is disciplinary records are part of the education records transferred when the student transfers from school A to school B, from district A to district B. The biggest exception, perhaps the most important exception in FERPA that allows non-consensual disclosure disclosure, excuse me, of personally identifiable information in student records is the health or safety emergency. The language author which is posted on the, out, on the PowerPoint outline uh, specifically authorizes school officials to disclose education records without consent, quote, in connection with an emergency to appropriate persons if the knowledge of such information is necessary to protect the health and safety of the student or other persons. HIPAA has a similar exception. You can see three pointers here um, in implementing this exception. It is to disclose information to appropriate parties in connection with an emergency. It describes the uh, information that can be closed, uh, disclosed, excuse me, uh, disciplinary actions uh, to officials with legitimate educational interests in the behavior of the student. And it also concerns disclosing information to school officials from another school who have legitimate educational interests in the behavior of a student. If the educational agency or institu institution determines that there is, and these are the kinds of words that come from the law and regulations and other guidance, articulable and, articulable and significant threat to the health or safety of a student or other individuals, it may disclose information from educational records to any person whose knowledge of that information is necessary to protect the health or safety of the student or other individual. Those are a lot of words, but as you can see, they stand for the idea that had many educators uh, in our uh, unfortunate series of school violence over the last couple of decades uh, maybe been more aware of this health or safety emergency exception, they wouldn't have been as reticent to share records to appropriate persons in those instances or maybe even to prevent those instances from occurring. It must relate, to disclose under the health or safety emergency, it must relate to an actual impending or imminent emergency. As you can see, uh, four bullet point listed of things that would logically fall under that. Uh, perhaps the third one and the second one are most relevant to our school safety um, personnel who may be viewing this. Um, that could also be disclosed under this exception, and this is bolded in quotes, in a situation in which a student gives sufficient cumulative warning signs that lead an educational agency or institution to believe that the student may harm himself or others at any moment. The important point here is that throughout our, again, history of uh, school violence over the last few decades, the, we'll say, law and regs and the interpretation of them by the U.S. Department of Education particularly an office charged with the implement 
implementation of FERPA, the Family Policy Compliance Office, or FPCO, have begun to more liberally construe in favor of educator judgment disclosing under health and safety emergency exceptions. It's now that the educators get deference and the benefit of the doubt in such disclosures per the United States Department of Education. It's a totality of the circumstances test subject to rational basis. Uh, the disclosure need not only be to medical or law enforcement authorities, it could be to parents, to other staff, and to other students. Pre-Columbine, the health and safety exception was to be strictly construed according to the regulations. However, subsequent revisions to the law and interpretations and policy changes of the U.S. Department of Education have changed this to basically a rational basis test. Educators, as long as they act in good faith and on a rational basis, are given deference in implementing this provision. I'm going to only briefly touch on HIPAA. As you probably well know, many times there are records related to a student's health care, medical conditions, and so on that may be contained within student records. If they're contained and maintained in a student record, they're subject to FERPA, not HIPAA. Although HIPAA may, ap may apply to those records in a different setting, FERPA predates HIPAA, and uh, HIPAA provides that if records are otherwise subject to FERPA, FERPA governs, not HIPAA. So when dealing with uh, disclosing education records in a health or safety emergency situation in the school safety arena, we need not necessarily be uh, having to think about HIPAA separately and thinking that we have this other law that might have other consequences and penalties. FERPA governs, not HIPAA. Another thing to think about when faced with or considering a situation in which education records might be disclosed in a health or safety emergency is that it was held in appellate, federal appellate courts years ago that there is no private cause of action under FERPA. What does that mean? That means that you as an educator or official in a school setting cannot be sued by a parent of a student whose education records you may have disclosed in a health or safety emergency. You cannot be sued by them individually for money damages. There were quotes that I read at the beginning of the presentation where uh, the implication uh, of what some of the educators were saying was that they were basically afraid to move because they didn't want to be sued. You know, my house gone, my career, etc. cetera. Uh, FERPA is limited to this. If there's a violation of FERPA, it's administrative administratively implemented by the U.S. Department of Education against the institution. It is not a law that leaves you personally liable. Uh, there's a case here, Gonzaga versus Doe, which uh, outlines considerations about that. I want to leave you with some references um, that I find quite helpful in regard to the issue. Uh, there's a Colorado Attorney General opinion. Of course, Colorado, from a lot of the cases, uh, has been a focus of some of the school shooting uh, experiences. And there was an Attorney General opinion written in 2018 specifically about disclosing education records in health or safety emergencies. Not long after that, in the latter part of 2018, the Nebraska Attorney General issued a similar opinion. I have a link up there for that. Uh, and then I've included two pages from the U.S. Department of Education federal uh, websites. One is about FERPA in general, and the second one, the, um, which is the fourth in our line of four here, is a specific piece of guidance issued by the Family Policy Compliance Office concerning FERPA in health safety emergencies and school safety settings. So I hope you are able to uh, take this information, apply it, find it useful, and hopefully alleviate some of your concerns. While we must take FERPA seriously, and the U.S. Department of Education does follow up on violations, alleged violations of FERPA, and it is nothing to dismiss, one other thing to consider that I'll leave you with is that FERPA prevents uh, or uh, prohibits a policy or practice of unlawfully releasing personally identifiable information in education records. 
a one-off instance, especially in a health or safety emergency, regardless of the applicability or perhaps inapplicability of appropriately applying the health or safety emergency, that one-off is not likely to be viewed as a policy or practice. Well, I hope that you enjoyed it and uh, thanks for watching.